Hello, I'll be talking about understanding mental illness through the Bible. Our agenda is number one, the definition of mental illness. And number two, from the Bible, Job's suffering and emotional struggle. And number three, Jonah's fear and inner conflict. And number four, Jesus' agony and anxiety. And number five, the role of the Holy Spirit in healing. Now, in the Bible, Job, Jonah, and Jesus are three important figures with different stories. In number one, Job is known for his great faith in God. He went through many hard times, like losing his family and becoming very sick. Even though he suffered, he never gave up on God, and in the end, God blessed him with more than he had before. And number two, Jonah was a prophet who tried to run away from God's command. God told him to go to a city called Nineveh to warn the people to change their ways. But Jonah didn't want to go and try to escape by sailing away. He was swallowed by a big fish, stayed there for three days, and then prayed for help. After being saved, he finally went to Nineveh to do what God asked. And number three, Jesus is the central figure in Christianity. He is known as the Son of God. Jesus traveled around teaching people about love, forgiveness, and God's kingdom. He performed miracles like healing the sick and died on the cross to save people from their sins. After three days, Jesus rose from the dead and his resurrection is celebrated during Easter. In the Bible, while Job, Jonah, and Jesus face great emotional and spiritual struggles, their experiences aren't described as mental illnesses. However, we can explore their feelings, which may resemble mental health challenges. So if we look at number one, Job, Job went through deep grief and despair. He lost everything, including his children, wealth, and health. He expressed feelings of hopelessness and sadness, which might be similar to depression today. Job overcame his suffering by holding on to his faith in God even when he didn't understand why bad things were happening. His faith helped him stay strong, and in the end, God restored everything Job had lost. Now, number two, Jonah. Jonah struggled with fear and anger. When God asked him to go to Nineveh, he ran away showing fear of the task God gave him. After being swallowed by the big fish, Jonah was overwhelmed with guilt and sadness like someone who feels anxious or depressed after avoiding a responsibility. Jonah overcame his struggle by praying to God, repenting, and finally accepting his mission. This helped him move forward with his life. And number three, in the Garden of Gethsemane, before his crucifixion, Jesus experienced great emotional agony. He prayed to God, asking if there was another way, and his distress was so intense that he sweat blood. That's true, he sweat blood. This can be compared to extreme anxiety. Jesus overcame this by submitting to God's will and trusting his plan. He found strength through prayer and faith in God's purpose for him, even in the face of death. While these stories show signs of emotional distress, their faith and trust in God helped them overcome their struggles. They relied on prayer, patience, and a deep connection to their beliefs to find peace. Job, Jonah, and Jesus all faced intense emotional and spiritual struggles that may be seen as similar to certain mental health challenges. Here are the ways they were alike. Number one, feelings of despair. All three experienced deep emotional pain. Job lost everything and expressed feelings of hopelessness. Jonah, when he ran from God's command, ended up in a dark place of guilt and sadness. Jesus, before his crucifixion, faced extreme distress in the Garden of Gethsemane, feeling overwhelmed by the weight of what was to come. These feelings are often linked with depression or extreme anxiety in modern terms. And number two, isolation. Each of them went through a period of isolation in their suffering. Job was abandoned by friends and felt misunderstood. 
Jonah was alone in the belly of the fish cut off from the world. Jesus was alone in his thoughts in Gethsemane and on the cross where he cried out feeling forsaken. This isolation deepened their emotional pain, similar to how people with mental illness can feel alone in their struggles. And number three, inner conflict. All three wrestled with their emotions and God's will. Job questioned why he was suffering. Jonah ran from his responsibility, and Jesus asked for another way before accepting his faith. This inner conflict where their feelings were at odds with what they believed they had to do can be compared to anxiety and inner turmoil many face in mental illness. Now let's talk about number four, overcoming through faith. Despite their mental and emotional struggles, each of them overcame their faith and trust in God. Job held on to his belief in God's justice. Jonah repented and accepted his mission, and Jesus found strength in trusting God's plan. This shows that they use spiritual practices like prayer and trust in a higher purpose to cope with their distress, much like how people today might rely on coping strategies and support systems to manage mental illness. So basically, Job, Jonah, and Jesus all went through emotional distress, but found healing and strength through their faith. This makes their experiences similar to what we understand about mental illness today. In modern times, the Holy Spirit can be a source of comfort, guidance, and strength for overcoming emotional struggles and mental health challenges, similar to how Job, Jonah, and Jesus found strength through their faith. Here's how the Holy Spirit can help us with conditions like despair, isolation, and inner conflict. Number one, let's talk about overcoming despair. When we feel hopeless like Job did, the Holy Spirit provides peace and hope. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit as a comforter. And we see that in John chapter 14, verse 26, who brings God's presence into our lives. Through prayer, we can invite the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with peace, helping us replace feelings of despair with trust in God's plan. The Holy Spirit also reminds us of God's promises, like his love and care, which can give us hope even in the darkest times. Number two, dealing with isolation. Jonah's time in the belly of the fish and Jesus' experience in Gethsemane show how isolation can deepen emotional pain. In today's world, people often feel alone in their struggles. The Holy Spirit, however, is always with us. By turning to the Holy Spirit, we can feel connected to God, even when we are physically or emotionally isolated. The Spirit can also guide us towards supportive relationships with us within a church community, reminding us that we are never truly alone. Number three, resolving inner conflict. Inner conflict where our feelings and responsibilities clash can create anxiety and stress as it did for Jonah and Jesus. The Holy Spirit offers wisdom and clarity, and we see that in John chapter 16, verse 13, helping us understand God's will and giving us the strength to follow it, even when it's hard. Through prayer and seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance, we can find peace in difficult decisions, trusting that the Spirit will lead us in the right direction. Number four, finding strength in faith. Just as Jesus overcame his intense anxiety by trusting in God's will, the Holy Spirit empowers us to face challenges with faith. The Spirit strengthens our connection to God, helping us rely on His power instead of our own. This faith can calm our minds, reduce our anxiety, and help us face challenges with confidence. In modern times, the Holy Spirit is available to help us through our emotional struggles by giving us peace, guidance, and comfort. By praying and relying on the Holy Spirit, we can overcome feelings of despair, loneliness, and inner conflict, finding strength and healing in our relationship with God.
As Christians, it is important to use the Holy Spirit to overcome emotional and mental struggles because the Holy Spirit is God's presence within us. The Spirit provides strength, comfort, guidance, and healing. Through the Holy Spirit, we experience God's love and power in our lives, helping us overcome challenges we cannot face alone. The Bible shows that the Holy Spirit plays an essential role in transforming our hearts and minds, bringing peace, wisdom, and inner strength during times of trouble. Here are some key reasons why it's important to rely on the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit comforts us. In moments of despair and sadness, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. It's essential to allow the Spirit to fill us with peace and hope, helping us rise above feelings of hopelessness. The scripture is, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. And that's John chapter 14, verse 26. And number two, Holy Spirit guides us. Now, when we feel lost or isolated, the Holy Spirit guides us towards truth and provides us with wisdom to make the right decisions. Trusting the Spirit's direction helps us overcome confusion and inner conflict. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come through, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. And that's in John 16, 13. And number three, the Holy Spirit brings peace. Anxiety, fear, and inner conflict can weigh heavily on us. The Holy Spirit helps calm our minds and hearts, giving us the peace we need to handle life's difficulties. Now the scripture is, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Romans 15, 13. Uh, and number four, the Holy Spirit gives us strength. In times of weakness, the Holy Spirit empowers us. Relying on the Spirit helps us overcome the feelings of powerlessness and find the strength to continue. Now the scripture is, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And number five, the Holy Spirit transforms our mindset. The Holy Spirit renews our minds, changing the way we think and help us overcome negative patterns like despair and anxiety. This transformation helps us live according to God's will and not be overcome by difficulties of life. And the scripture is, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's in Romans chapter 12, verse two. Now, number six, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Sometimes we don't know how to pray or what to ask for during times of struggle. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us, helping us communicate our needs to God even when we feel overwhelmed. The scripture says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that's in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Remember, relying on the Holy Spirit is crucial for overcoming emotional and mental struggles because the Spirit provides comfort, guidance, peace, strength, and transformation. These Bible verses demonstrate how the Holy Spirit helps us overcome despair, isolation, anxiety, and inner conflict. Through the Spirit, we are empowered to live with faith and confidence in God's care. Now, in Western Massachusetts, here in the United States, it has many mental health resources for people who need help. Thank you, Lord. The Department of Mental Health, DMH, provides services to people of all ages. And they have offices in cities like Northampton, Pittsfield, Greenfield, Holyoke, and Springfield. They are the state's main source of mental health support. You can learn more at mass.gov. 
The Behavioral Health Network, BHN, offers programs for adults, children, and families in Hampton, Hampshire, Franklin, and Berkshire counties. Their services are available at home, in the community, at their clinics, and through telehealth. More information is found at bhninc.org. The Mental Health Association, MHA, helps with emotional health, substance recovery, and other mental health needs. Their Best Life Center uh, personalized support for those seeking therapy, you can visit mhainc.org for details. Then there's NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. In Western Massachusetts offers education and support for people living with mental health conditions and their families. They provide helpful resources and information about mental illness and treatments. Check their website at namiwm.org. That's namiwesternmass.org. There are additional services available, such as the Behavioral Health Helpline, which is free and available 24-7 at masshelpline.com. Clinical and Support Options, CSO, offers therapy and counseling in the region. You can visit them at csoinc.org. The Center for Human Development, CHD, has both in-person and virtual support groups for teens and adults to help improve mental health and learn coping strategies. You can visit chd.org for details. And each of these organizations provides a wide range of services from therapy and counseling to the crisis intervention and support groups to help people in Western Massachusetts with their mental health needs. Right now, we pastors, elders, and ministers are helping people who struggle with mental illness by being kind and loving. One of the most important things we do is listen without judging. That's what we do. We listen without judging. We try to understand how people feel by putting ourselves in their shoes. That's correct. We try to understand how people feel by putting ourselves in their shoes. You know, Jesus showed us how to do this when he cared for people who are suffering, like Matthew, like in, as we see in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. It's like being a lighthouse in a storm, giving light and safety when someone feels lost. We also pray with people who are having a hard time, which is another way to show love. In Galatians 6, 2, the Bible says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This means we can help carry someone's heavy load when life feels too hard. We tell people that getting help for mental illness isn't a sign of weak faith. Just like you would see a doctor for a broken arm, God works through doctors and therapists to help heal our minds. We encourage people to seek help when they need it, like guiding them to the right tools to fix a broken car. We share Bible verses that remind people of God's love and care. For example, in Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This verse is like a warm blanket wrapping around someone when they feel hurt and alone. We also talk about how going through hard times can help us grow, like how a diamond is made under pressure. In James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, it says that facing troubles can make us stronger and help us have patience and faith. By sharing this, we help people see that their struggles have a purpose and that God is still working in their lives even when things are tough. It's also important for us to make a, our church a place where people feel safe talking about mental health, kind of sort of like we're doing tonight. When our church becomes a place where mental illness can be talked about openly, it's like opening windows to let fresh air in. The whole community becomes a place of healing. We encourage church members to care for each other, which is like planting seeds of kindness that grow into strong, supportive friendships. By giving helpful resources and information on mental health, we give people the tools they need to help themselves or others. In this way, we help our church be a safe harbor, offering hope and comfort to those who need it. God provides mental health support. And it's true, God does provide mental health support. God plays a vital role in helping us navigate mental health challenges. Through faith, prayer, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, God offers comfort and strength during difficult times. 
The Bible is filled with promises of God's care and his willingness to help us bear our burdens. Let's take a look. Number one, God offers peace and comfort. When we feel overwhelmed, God invites us to cast our worries in him. In 1 Peter, there it is, there, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. By turning God into prayer, we can find peace that surpasses all understanding, as we see in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. And those are two verses. And number two, the Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit sent by God is our helper and comforter. Jesus said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things. And that's in John chapter 14, verse 26. The Holy Spirit guides us, provides wisdom, and helps us overcome inner struggles. And number three, strength through faith. Trusting in God gives us strength to face mental and emotional challenges. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And number four, community and support. God often works through others to provide support. Being part of a church community allows us to share our burdens and receive encouragement. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, again, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it tells us, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And number five, healing and restoration. God desires our well-being and offers healing. In Psalms 147.3, again, Psalms 147.3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You see, through prayer and faith, we can seek God's healing for our minds and hearts. And number six, there's a hope for the future. God gives us hope even in the midst of struggles. In Jeremiah 29.11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You see, by relying on God's promises and seeking his presence, we can find comfort and assistance in dealing with mental health issues. Praying, reading scripture, and in fellowship with others are ways we can experience God's support. Remember that seeking professional help is also important and God can work through doctors and counselors to provide healing. So today we talked about understanding mental health through the Bible. We talked about number one, the definition of mental illness. Mental illness can be seen as a struggle of the mind and heart, much like carrying a heavy burden that we can't lift alone. It affects how we think, feel, and act. In the Bible, we see people like Job, Jonah, and even Jesus, who faced intense and emotional pain and spiritual struggles. Mental illness can take many shapes like depression, anxiety, and fear. These feelings are like dark clouds that block the sunshine in our lives. But just like how Job found hope again, people can find healing with the right support. Number two, Job's suffering and mental struggle. Job lost everything from his children to his wealth and health. He felt crushed under the weight of despair, saying, my soul is weary of my life. And that's in Job chapter 10, verse one. Job's story shows us an example of deep sorrow similar to depression. He questioned why God allowed such pain but kept his faith. In the end, God restored Job's life, giving him double what he had before. And that's in Job 42.10. Job teaches us that even when we feel lost and alone, faith can bring healing. And number three, Jonah's fear and anxiety. Jonah ran away from God's plan because of fear. He was swallowed by a big fish, which is like feeling trapped in a dark place. While inside, Jonah prayed to God, saying, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. And that's in Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Jonah's story shows how running from our problems can lead to even more pain. When Jonah finally accepted God's plan, he found peace and completed his mission. His journey is like someone facing anxiety but finding relief through prayer and trust in God. 
And number four, Jesus' agony and anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane before being crucified, Jesus felt overwhelmed. His anxiety was so intense that he sweat blood, as we see in Luke chapter 22, verse 44. He prayed to God asking, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Again, that's in Luke 22, verse 42. Jesus' struggle teaches us that even when we face extreme fear or stress, trusting in God's plan can bring us strength. His example shows that prayer and faith are powerful tools in overcoming emotional pain. And number five, we talked about the role of the Holy Spirit in healing. Just like Job, Jonah, and Jesus found comfort in their faith, we can also find healing through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like a guide who helps us through the darkest valleys. The Bible says the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And that's in John chapter 14, verse 26. The Holy Spirit works through people like pastors or doctors, giving us strength and peace in hard times. In closing, the power of prayer and the strength found in community support are invaluable tools in our journey through mental struggles. Together, we can cultivate resilience, foster understanding, and create a nurturing environment where healing and hope thrive. Let us remember that we are never alone in our battles with faith and each other's encouragement. We can rise above our challenges and emerge stronger than before. And that is all the good news for today.